Facebo and techniques of Facebo recordings. So in the previous presentation, we discussed about Facebo, the history of Facebo, definition and different types of Facebo. Let's just recapitulate what we read in the previous presentation. So basically, there are two types of Facebo, kinematic and arbitrary Facebo. Kinematic Facebo is the mandibular Facebo as the bifoc is attached to the mandibular arch. Whereas arbitrary phase bow is the maxillary phase bow, wherein the bite fork is attached to the maxillary arch. Kinematic phase bow locates the exact axis of rotation of condyle, so it's more specific but more time taking as well. Whereas arbitrary phase bow relates the maxilla to the arbitrary position of condyles, so it is dependent on anatomic averages. Kinematic phase bow is used with fully adjustable articulator whereas arbitrary phase bow is used with semi-adjustable articulator. Kinematic phase bow is quite cumbersome though it gives specific results. So it is used for fabrication of a fixed partial denture or in cases of full mouth rehabilitation. Whereas arbitrary phase bow is quite commonly used in clinical practice and it is used while fabrication of complete dentures. There are different types of arbitrary phase bow such as Fascia type, earpiece type, Hanau face bow or spring bow, slidomatic or tenar, churl bow and whip mix face bow. So we discussed about fascia type and earpiece type in the previous presentation and, and we also discussed about Hanau face bow. Now coming to the techniques for locating hinge axis using a face bow. So as there are two types of face bow, so there are two types of methods as well. So there is the arbitrary method and there is the kinematic method. So first, let's take a look at the arbitrary method. It is based on anatomic averages. So the basic idea is to orient the maxillary cast as it is in the jaws. So orient it is in the similar way on the articulator. So why this is to be done? Be because the mandible moves in an arc. It does not just move up and down. It moves in an arc. So in order to orient the cast in that arc of movement, we need to record the orientation jaw relation depending on the terminal hinge axis that determines the rotation of the mandible. So how do we orient the maxillary cast? So we basically mark three points based on anatomic averages. So there are two posterior reference points and one anterior reference point and these reference points guide us in orienting the maxillary cast. So there are few points worth mentioning. Let's take a look at them. So here the purple dotted line. You can see this is a line connecting the outer canthus of the eye and the tragus of the ear. And the point is marked 13 millimeters anterior to the posterior margin of the tragus. So this point is known as Barron's point. Other point is Birdstrom point. So here this green dotted line represents the FH plane that is the Frankfurt horizontal plane and the point chosen is 10 millimeters anterior to the center of the spherical insert for the external auditory meatus and 7 millimeters below the FH plane. So you have the horizontal and vertical coordinates. Horizontal coordinate is 10 millimeters anterior to the external auditory meatus and vertical coordinate is 7 millimeters below the FH plane and this point corresponds to the Birdstrom's point. Another point worth mentioning is Geisse's point. It is a point 10 millimeters anterior to the posterior margin of the tragus on a line from the center of the tragus to the outer canthus of the eye. So similar to the Barron's point, we mark a line from the outer canthus of the eye to the tragus of the ear, so this orange line, and we take a point 10 millimeters anterior to the posterior margin of the tragus. And this is Geisse's point. So out of all these points, Geisse's point is the most commonly used point today and Barron's point is the second most accurate posterior point for reference. Whereas Birdstrom point is found to be the most frequently closest to the hinge axis. Barron's point is quite commonly used in fascia type articulator. Now talking about anterior reference points. So the most commonly used anterior reference point is Nasion which is marked in this image by A. So it is used with quick mount face bow that is a whip mix face bow. 
and some face bows also use nazion minus 23 millimeters then hanau face bow uses orbital which is located with the help of orbital pointer whereas a similar point orbital minus 7 millimeters which is represented in this image by c is it represents frankfurt plane whereas d represents ala of the nose which corresponds to campers plane now next moving on to the procedure of face bow recording first let's take a look at the armamentarium so which we have already discussed this in the previous presentation let's just revise it so the face bow is made up of a u-shaped frame which has a calibrated condyler axis at its two ends and and you can see the ear pieces at the terminal ends which will fit into the patient's ear like a stethoscope then there is the bite fork which will be inserted in the patient's mouth for bite registration there is the transfer jig which will transfer the face bow recording to the articulator the maxillary cast now because most commonly we use arbitrary face bow wherein we use a maxillary cast uh, if you're using a kinematic face bow then you need to have a mandibular cast wax spatula and bite registration wax so the steps in face bow recording are first you seat the patient in a comfortable position the head of the patient should be upright so that the reference points are easily marked when using a face bow the next step is marking the points for condylar position so the reference points which we discussed the anterior and posterior reference points you can mark those points on the patient's face you mark a line from the auditory meatus running to the outer canthus of the eye and if you're using a fascia type face bow then you need to mark parent's point on this wherein the condylar rods would be positioned next step is preparation of occlusal rims so in a complete denture patient you will have the occlusal rims ready a notch is made of about 2 mm in depth in the region of the first molar so this basically helps in holding the face bow in its position but then the mandibular occlusal rim is reduced so as to make some space for the bite registration material next you prepare the bite fork so on the bite fork you apply the bite registration material so here aloe wax is used it is softened and shaped in the form of a horseshoe and then it is placed on the bite fork taking into consideration that the entire thickness that is the thickness of the bite fork along with the aloe wax should not exceed 6 mm then the bite fork along with the bite registration material is placed in the patient's mouth and the patient is already wearing the occlusal rims a thin layer of petroleum jelly can be applied on the occlusal rims so that they can be easily removed now when you place the bite fork in the patient's mouth note that the midline of the bite fork should coincide with the midline of the maxillary occlusal rim so the stem that is the handle of the bite fork it will be parallel to the sagittal plane then you ask the patient to close his his or her mouth into the bite fork and the stem of the bite fork is then locked to the transverse rod of the face bow the u shaped frame of the face bow is positioned on the patient and the condylar rods are moved according to the reference points and after the posterior reference points have been positioned the u shaped frame is locked so this is the entire setup in the patient's mouth and on the face Now if you're using a Hanau face bow so in that there will be an orbital pointer which will point to the orbital that is it will touch the infraorbital notch then finally the entire face bow assembly is removed along with the occlusal rim from the patient's mouth and then it will be transferred to the articulator so this is the final setup you can see the face bow holds the bite registration material on the maxillary occlusal rim This face bow recording is then transferred to the articulator using a transfer jig. So in today's time most commonly used face bow in clinical practice is a whip mix face bow. The procedure is, is quite similar to the Hanau face bow which we saw just now. So using bite registration material insert the bite fork into the patient's mouth. 
Here most commonly used mite registration material is blue mousse which is a vinyl polyxylosane mite registration impression material. The mite fork assembly is then attached to the shaft assembly of the face bow. Then adjust the face bow so that the vertical and horizontal rods are aligned. Gently secure the ear pieces into the patient's ear. So this is a coronal view exhibiting the ear pieces being placed into the patient's ear. Then tighten the center knob. So this is a sagittal view where you can see the knob, the center knob is positioned on the nasion of patient's nose. So it fits into the depression of nasion. Then tighten the vertical rod and then the horizontal bar. So this completes the face bow application. The face bow is fastened to the patient's face and the recording is done. Then we remove the appliance from the patient's face. Now the face bow is disassembled and the transverse jig is removed from the crossbar. Just reinstall the support bar and move the incisal pin out of the way. Attach the transfer base to the articulator and then secure the transfer jig in the transfer base assembly. So this transfer jig transfers the recording from the face bow to the articulator. Then you rest the upper member on the support bar. So this is the final setup. The bite fork along with the bite registration material has been oriented according to the face bow recording and then accordingly the maxillary cast is oriented Next, moving on to the kinematic method of locating the hinge axis, which allows the precise determination of the patient's hinge axis, that is the terminal hinge axis. So the recording of kinematic phase bow is started with the patient seated in upright position, away from the back or headrest. The clutch is attached to the mandibular teeth or the occlusal rim, and it is stabilized using impression compound. The graph pad is positioned over the condyle and the crossbar is attached to the clutch by means of universal clamp. And the axis indicator is attached to the assembly and positioned over the graph pad over the condyle. Take note that the axis indicators are adjusted such that when the patient opens and closes the mouth, the indicator no longer moves in an arc, rather it rotates on a single point. Then the graph background is removed and that point is marked on the patient's skin. The assembly is then removed. Now there are also other modified techniques which are used to locate arbitrary and kinematic hinge axis by making some modifications in conventional methods. Some worth mentioning are the Loma Linda hinge axis recording device and method, the Burengraph intraoral method, then a technique using geometric principle to locate hinge axis and Abdal Hadi's technique of locating arbitrary hinge axis. So this was about the technique of using face bow for recording jaw relation. Now let's take a look at in which cases do we use a face bow record. So for obtaining a balanced occlusion while fabrication of complete denture and also when balanced occlusion in the eccentric position is desired. Then in class 1 and class 2 cases wherein there is an open anterior bite or an end to end relationship also for segmental correction. Then in cases wherein the entire quadrant is to be restored. And in cases wherein a definite cusp fossa or cusp tip to tip inclined relation is desired or when using cusp form of teeth in complete dentures. Kinematic face bow is used in cases where we need to precisely reproduce the exact opening and closing of the mandible. So with this we complete the topic of uh, hinge axis, orientation jaw relation and face bow. The hinge axis concept is still controversial in spite years of study and there are various school of thoughts regarding its existence and location which often leads to doubt regarding its application in everyday clinical practice. With the availability of easy to use earpiece face bows location and transfer of hinge axis to the articulator is an easy and quick procedure and 
precision is the key to prosthodontics. So it is imperative that restorations are made as accurately as possible, which is best achieved by the use of hinge axis concept. So it should be incorporated into routine clinical practice to achieve optimum results. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.